This video contains an ad for KiwiCo. More about them later. I gotta be honest with you guys, there has been a problem with this year's uploads. There hasn't been a single castle, not one. And since there's only a couple of weeks left of this year, I think it's high time we build a freaking castle again, baby! Woo! This time we're gonna be approaching things a little differently and pff, of course it's gonna be a big one. I don't know if it's gonna be like the biggest one we've ever made, because it's kind of ridiculous to like keep scaling projects up and up and up and up and up, but let's be real. It's gonna be the biggest. And this time, I'll try to make templates of most of the castle parts and put up for download for our patrons. Okay, Martina, where do we begin? I think the easiest way to get started is just make a sketch, figure out the design and composition and everything, and just deal with all the other stuff later. So, uh, let's get sketchy. Yeah, boy, we have a sketch. It's not super detailed, but the main purpose of this is just to get the overall vibe, get the silhouette right. And I'm gonna begin with building the mountain because I just think that it's gonna be easier so we can have something to place the castle on top of. Martina, how the heck are you gonna build the mountain? Like what, 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 what? Well, what I like to do is just to try to simplify the shapes. So basically we take the sketch and boom, we simplify the shapes. We got the boxes ready. The technique I'm gonna use is something I haven't actually used before. And I think this is really gonna be one of those trust the process kind of things. So uh, just <laughs> bear with me while this is looking probably very stupid for a little while. It's mountain time. <laughs> Or big shapes so now we can start grabbing smaller things glue those on top and gradually just make it look more organic gradually just building up the shapes adding some more stuff on the outside and also cutting up some corners here and there to like break it up a bit slowly it's becoming a bit more mountainy So far so good. So now I'm gonna go and see if I have some like styrofoam type trash just so I can add some smaller, more rounded shapes. <laughs> I love this layout. The little ravine in the middle here. Mm. I think all of these like foam rock things turn out really nice. Also, you might notice I've tried to make the rocks a little bit directional because I think it looks more realistic and interesting. But just to make sure everything doesn't look like it's just leaning to one side, I chose to do this area and an area over here in the opposite direction. Just give it some balance, you know? But obviously this is very much like bits and pieces right now. We have to like try to bind everything together. So the next step is fabric. To the fabric box. A pretty common technique used for like large dioramas and amusement parks and stuff is using fiberglass to bind things together but <laughs> I don't want to work with fiberglass no so Hansi was like wait can't we just use some fabric and do the same thing like linen for example and a bit of glue and I mean yeah probably so we're gonna try I mean the main purpose of fiberglass is really just to like bind things together make it more uniform and make it a lot stronger which PVA glue by itself kind of does already but with added strength of linen like, hello, it has to work the same way, right? We're gonna try anyway, so let's just glue the glue and hope for the best. <laughs> Listen to this. Completely freaking 
hard. <laughs> I was pretty skeptical going into this, to be honest, but seeing it now, it's lightweight. It was so easy to do, just cardboard boxes, a little bit of foam, some linen and glue, and you have this. It ended up being really hard to just do one big piece of linen, so I ended up having to cut it into smaller pieces, make a little patchwork. I feel like we have a really good base shape here, but we're still missing one very essential thing, and that is texture. To texture, I'm basically gonna do two different things. Number one, I'm gonna use some paper towels. Take these, rip it into small, manageable strips. Then we can use our little PVA glue, put it on, grab a brush, brush it on there. And then you just literally take this, plop it on, and dab. It's such a simple, easy way to get rock texture. And you can just like build it up until you get the result you want. Eh? Looking pretty good, right? But I think if we cover this entire thing in only paper towels, it's gonna look a little boring and uniform. Which brings me to my second material, flour. Or like, as in the baking thing, not the plant thing. Flour. Whoa. Now you see what I normally see. Breaking the powerful wall. Material number two. Basically what we're gonna do, we take the flour in the cup, take some glue in the cup, some water in the cup, mix it up, and then we got some gravel paste thing. Let me show you what I mean. First, flour, PVA glue, and a little bit of water. And now we mix the roux into a little glue to do. Look at that forbidden porridge. Yummy. So this stuff, I want to kind of place on the more flat surfaces, like up here, for instance, just to create some of that like gravel type texture. But the important thing is I want to try to blend this together so it doesn't just look like this area is paper towels. This is the flower stuff. But really just like make it look natural. Basically, you just make the flower just droop down a little and creep up a little and then have the paper towers also creep up and blend together. Very well explained, Martina. I'll just show you. It's easier. Okay, let's do it. Kind of hard to get any impression of what this will actually look like because everything is just a bit transparent and weird at this point. I think it's going to be much more visible once we paint this thing and put the base coat on. But before we can do that, we just have to take this and attach it to this wooden board. I think the spray paint really helped just bring forward the texture. There are certain places now I kind of want to go back in and touch up a little bit, but I'm gonna let it dry first. And in the meantime, we can start working on the buildings. Oh yeah. You know what's boring? This clock. You all agree, I've seen you in the comments. So I'm gonna fix that. Powered by today's ads, Kiwico. Kiwico delivers these awesome monthly crates right to your door. And they're filled with hands-on projects designed by experts and tested by kids. Like this one, the watercolor clock maker crate, where you can learn to paint and experiment with watercolors and create your own unique clock design. I had too much fun with this, oh, seriously. And of course, every crate comes with kid-friendly instructions and all the materials you need to complete the project. But I don't like painting. <laughs> Not a problem. Kiwico got nine different lines for every age group and interest, and they're all made to encourage STEAM education in a fun and entertaining way. If you don't want to subscribe, they also offer individual crates so you can test it out. And right now, they also have limited time holiday projects. I think Kiwico makes for an amazing gift, especially for any kids in your life. So if you're interested, then check out our link below or use our code NERDFORGE to get 50% off your first month. And back to the project. As a kid, all I wanted in the world basically was to live in a giant castle away from other people, sort of Hogwartsy, magical, of course, with magic, <laughs> preferably. And so I've tried to make a design sort of based on what I envisioned at the time. And it consists of all of these little towers bound together by some larger buildings. And of course, this cool bridge in the middle, sort of holding these two mountains together. And I think the way I'm gonna build this is to build individual towers first and then sort of bind them together after. And I think I'm gonna begin with a big one. Why not? 
I saved this big old tube from some package we got a while ago. And I think this could work as the base for the tower. If I just put it there. I think that looks like a pretty good size. Just need to cover it with a little bit of foam. We try. <laughs> Just gonna cut it a little shorter because you're a little bit tall. 35, that should be tall enough. And now we chop. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna save this. We have our base. And to cover this base, we need XPS foam. I'm basically just gonna cut this into really thin sheets and then we can like carve little bricks into it and just wrap it around the whole thing. And to do that, of course, I have my beloved hot wire cutter. Oh, don't destroy it right now. It's too long. No, nope, nope, nope. This method works really well. We've done it so many times before. Like, just look, the result can be awesome. But the downside is it takes a lot of time and I'm gonna have, what, a million towers and a million bricks. So <laughs> I'm cheating this time. Sorry, not sorry. William, my friend, I need your support. My trusted employee, you're gonna help me make all these bricks. Double-sided tape. XPS foam, XPS foam in the laser, and we have this nice little brick pattern. So now, let's go to our laser program, we click, start. Go, William, go! Look at that speed. <laughs> 10 minutes later, and we have this. Oh, just need to clean this up a bit. First of all, let's enhance. Draw between the lines to emphasize the little brick. Oh yeah, much better. Now I just need some texture. So I'm gonna grab some aluminum foil, curl it up into a little ball like that. And then we just roll it on. It looks very aggressive, but it works really well. And now we just need a couple of windows. Pop them out. Mark some holes. And now we can take this and glue it on there. Dude, look at that. You can't even see the seam between the two sheets. I also added these nice little windows. The grid here is just on paper that is literally glued to the inside like this. And then just a nice little frame around it. And it looks so good so far. Just to address it now, I'm not too worried about the backside here, like the seam, because you're not gonna see that. So we just pretend it doesn't exist. Next, I'm gonna try to like taper this outwards a little bit, make it a bit wider at the top here, add some more detail in this area, and then we need a roof. Just need some more foam. Oh, I'm just in love with this little side tower here. I'm gonna add a bunch of these tiny little windows on the sides of the roof here later. I didn't want to do it now because I want to put some LEDs inside some of these and doing that after they're attached is just gonna be very difficult. So we wait with that until we have the LEDs in place. But uh, yeah, that was just one tower. Now we just have to make a million more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This has taken 
taken about a week to just make the towers? <laughs> oh boy! I've had a lot of help from our intern Isabel and Hansi to put all of this together and we now have a total of 11 different towers in all shapes and sizes which means that we have all our towers we have our landscape and we can now start on the part where we try to like bind everything together into something cohesive we're gonna apply this to basically all the stonework and while Hansi is beginning on that on the towers I will start on the bridge <laughs> Oh yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Now we just have to add some supports like under here and try to make this bridge just fit in with the landscape. I think that looks pretty good. So now we just need some supports down here and here. We have a bridge, baby. Oh, I love how the support turned out. It's not fastened in place yet though. Uh, so we can still just like plop this out but we'll do that later. We have a bridge, we have a bunch of buildings so far, but I feel like I just need a, a little break from all the foam work. So instead I'm gonna move on to my favorite part, which is the painting. Oh, Cause the thing is we can actually start painting the entire landscape here and then we can just go back, paint the towers and put them in after everything is painted here. So, ooh, yes, let's do some painting, baby. Woohoo! done what i think the bricks turned out really nice this time i mean that individual brick stage where you paint all the different colors <laughs> we went a little overboard but i think it really just added to the realism you can just see it through the dry brush and it just adds that that nice variation you are so pretty my friend and having this done it means we are ready for assembly <laughs> It's been too many weeks and uh, I was so excited for this stage. I kind of got carried away last night and uh, I've put in three of the towers already, but it's really easy. Let me show you how. This one, for example, is going to be like right about there. And I have some cables sticking out here because there's lights in it. Of course. Did you think I would do this without lights? <laughs> You're crazy. Just going to make sure the cables stick out in the back. And of course, we have to just see that it is vertical in every direction like this. A little bit of glue. First of all, to like tack it in place. And now the most important thing, blending. And we have more magic goop, so much magic goop. Sculpt them all. This stuff you just mix with water and you get this nice goop mix. First of all, gloves. See, always a problem with the missing finger is this, this every time. So we put some goop in the cup, some water in the cup, mix it up and then we have goop. So we just blend it with the landscape. And there you go. Just put some paint on there and that's a really nice transition. Like you'll never know. I have like seven more towers to attach. So uh, let's just do that quick, okay.
It's been many hours later and we now have blended all the towers in place. I think it worked out pretty well with the sculptor mold here around everywhere. I mean, this stuff is great. It's like makeup for your dioramas. Just cover up all your blemishes and pretend they're not there. <laughs> Amazing. And now on the back here, you can see we have a bunch of little cables sticking out. So all of these have to be wired up. And of course they go to some individually addressable LEDs inside the towers here. And Hansi 3D modeled and printed out these genius little transparent cubes that just distributes the light more nicely. So now we have lights in, well, almost all the towers here. So next up, the final stage of the building process is adding in some walls here. What we're gonna do is just to cut them to size, blend them in a little bit, and then it's done. Well, the buildings, anyway. Let's see now, maybe. Eh? Oh, oh. Just gonna fasten this in place. Put it in place. Oh my god, that looks too good. Now just to cover the cracks. left to do. First of which is to cover up these sculptable pieces with a little bit of paint. Oh, that definitely looks a lot better. <laughs> Just getting rid of all that white. Nice. Oh man, I can't believe we are five weeks into this project. I mean... Okay, it feels kind of surreal now to finally be at the stage where we can start adding in details and grass and just see the finish line coming together. <laughs> of course, some of the details we're gonna have in here are some itsy bitsy miniatures. Just look at these small people. They're the same height as my fingernail. They are so cute. I did not paint these myself. These were all painted by Arilla's miniatures. Check her out on Instagram. She's super skilled. I mean, just look at this dragon. So cool. The next thing we're gonna do is to put on some grass. So I had to find my static grass applicator here in the darkness. Where are you? Hello? <sighs> you know, this project is just bonus exciting because this is not just gonna be stored in our warehouse, but we're actually gonna display it somewhere, uh, which you can find out where at the end of the video. Martina, what is the difference between static grass and just grass? Well, this thing just applies static into this little grass stuff and just makes it stand upright. So instead of the grass being sad and just laying like this, it perks up and becomes happy again. <laughs> Real easy, we just need a little glue, smash it on there, take this, turn it on, shake it, and we have grass. This is more satisfying to watch in a time lapse, so let's just, let's, let's just do the time lapse. Grass, check, which means there's only one little thing left to do, and that is to add some trees and vegetation and the tiny little miniatures. Oh, it's coming to an end! <sighs> Let's put them in.
Guys, it is done! <laughs> oh, it's 1 a.m. I am so tired. <laughs> Five weeks of so much work, so many bricks, so many shingles. I think it was worth it. Just, just look at this stupid, big, awesome thing. Uh, I'm too, too tired to appreciate it in its entirety. I just need to sleep first. This is not just gonna stay with us, just like here being sad alone in the studio. We're actually gonna put this somewhere where people can see it, at least for a little while. That's tomorrow morning after sleep. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, <laughs> remember we have new merch and it's very comfortable. It's kept me comfortable for weeks. And if you want one, it's still available for pre-order on our website. Check it out. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I need to sleep. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> oh, it's a, ignore the mess. Good morning, guys. It's now 7 a.m., which is a little early for my taste. And now we have to pack this thing up and hopefully drive it safely to its final destination. Please. <sighs> we are here at Outland, the best store in all of Oslo. My favorite store, not sponsored or anything, but it's just an absolutely amazing store. So check it out. You will just leave your wallet here. <laughs> now I just hope everything is okay. I mean, we did bring glue. We've done this before. <laughs> it looks fine. Okay, I think nothing is broken. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now moment of truth, is it? wide enough oh oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i'll just stay here it's fine yeah how how i think i'm just gonna be on display <laughs> um uh, no but really <laughs> yeah okay okay that <laughs> thank god everything is okay everything fit so this is gonna stay here for a little while. So make sure that if you're in Oslo, just drop by, look at this, go in the store. It's a lot of awesome stuff here. <gasps> oh, I, right now I just feel relieved, exhausted, and so freaking happy with this thing. This is by far the coolest diorama we have ever made. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And now it is finally time after five weeks. Let's have a look at the final result. <laughs> If you're still here come come look at this remember this one we made this like two years ago and it's still here so if you go here you have double the reason i mean triple the reason with everything that's in here but you can also see this okay bye good night i'm going home to sleep